Perfect. Thank you. All right, then you're good to go, man. Awesome. Right. Thank Enjoy. you. Enjoy. Hey guys, this is Dan with Gears and Gadgets. Thanks for tuning in. That is right, I went out and bought the GoPro Hero 9. I am really incredibly happy that I did. As you can see, it also has the media mod on here as well. At the end of this video, I will get into doing some audio comparisons with the media mod on there. Uh, because I haven't really seen a lot of information out there uh, with the media mod. Now what this video is not gonna be is the comparisons of the Hero 9 video quality compared to the 8 and the 7 and the 2 5s and the Max. There's a bunch of other videos out there where people put all these cameras on a board and, and do all kinds of crazy video comparisons. What I wanna talk about is the difference between these cameras from a usability standpoint and where some of the features and benefits uh, come in where uh, people that are considering these cameras, especially somebody that's kind of just getting into uh, maybe wanting a GoPro, their first GoPro, or relatively newer, or a smaller YouTube channel. Uh, so with that being said, let's go ahead and take a look at the current offerings from GoPro right now. So looking at all three cameras, I'm not including the Max, just the 9, the 8, and the 7, uh, I think the biggest story is that the Hero 7 for $250 compared to the Hero 9 for $450 is probably the steal of the century when it comes to, to GoPros. Uh, and you might ask, well, why are you skipping the Hero 8? And I'm going to go over that uh, shortly, but I personally, if I was looking for a GoPro and I was looking at all the pricing, I would only be comparing the 9 and the 7 because of the fact that the Hero 8 had some very limiting design features to it that um, we will go over uh, when I show you that camera uh, in a moment. The 7 at 250 bucks, I think is an absolute steal. I love the 7. I still moto vlog with the 7. That is the camera that's always on my helmet uh, and will continue to be on my helmet. I will not run the uh, the Hero 9 in that setup because, well, it's, it's too expensive of a camera and it's also unnecessary. Now between the uh, 7 and the 9, the 9 has a 20 megapixel sensor and the 7 has a 12. That's a pretty substantial bump up for the 9, but again, for moto vlogging and for your average person, I don't think that people that are watching YouTube channels or videos that you're making are going to be able to tell the difference uh, one video to the next. Now sure, if you put those two videos side by side and cut them right down the middle, you're going to see that difference. But I really don't think people are gonna be able to tell a huge difference enough to justify a $200 price bump. Yeah, the nine shoots in 5K, the, the seven shoots in 4K. Again, from a usability standpoint, most people that are out filming and putting YouTube videos and running channels, they're not shooting in four or 5K because the file sizes get really large and it just is a slower editing process. Uh, personally, for me, I only shoot up to 2.7K and then everything I edit and publish is in 1080 anyways because on your phone, that's where most people are watching the videos and uh, the difference really isn't substantial enough to work with those larger file sizes. Now, video stabilization, HyperSmooth 3.0 versus HyperSmooth on the 7 is absolutely ridiculously different. Uh, the 9 stabilization is out of this world. There is a video sample at the end of this video of me walking around the garage, shaking the camera around so you can see uh, how absolutely ridiculous the 9 is now. But sometimes in a moto vlog setup or if you're biking or uh, some of these action sports type setups, if the video is too smooth, you almost lose a little bit of the emotion of the, that's created by the motion and uh, sometimes you can smooth video out too much. Uh, the front screen, obviously, yep, huge deal. Uh, pretty important for uh, people that are vlogging. And uh, removable battery, it is a, a much larger battery on the 9 now. So we'll see how that plays out in the future. And then a lot of this other stuff I don't really care about. Photos, personally, I don't, I don't do photos, the night lapse, all these things. I don't really use any of those functions. Uh, to me, it's just added features that they can put on some marketing material. And I'm sure other people use it, but personally I don't, so I can't speak to it and I'm not gonna just make things up that I don't really use all that much. Now, live streaming 1080p. I did a live stream the other day, uh, Tuesday when I bought this camera, I live streamed my ride home on my on my bike. And I streamed that through uh, my AT&T hotspot uh, the beginning of that live stream, which I will link uh, up above here, you can watch it, I, I suggest you do, it was pretty wild. Uh, it was in an area where there are some dead spots with cell service. So the beginning of the video kind of had some bitrate issues going on, which I expected was going to happen with the 1080p video. But going down the highway 75, 80 miles an hour, uh, this thing streaming at 1080 was insanely good. 
compared to any streams I've ever tried on 720, uh, this was actually better at 1080. A lot of that has to do with the service that you have at the time. So I can't totally credit that to the Hero 9 uh, because there's a lot of different variables, especially when you're ripping uh, 80 miles an hour down the highway. That pretty much is all of the feature sets that I think is really worthy of any sort of discussion. Uh, in my opinion, I think the 7 and 9 are the cameras to talk about. Now, for a lot of the things that I disliked about the 8, kind of also forced me into starting to use GoPros in a bit more of specific roles. And for that, I'm actually kind of happy because it's been really nice to be able to have dedicated cameras. I know that a lot of people cannot do this type of thing. I, I totally understand that. Not too long ago, I also couldn't myself. Now, the Hero 8 was kind of my vlogging camera handheld on the tripod. The 7 is my dedicated moto vlogging. It, it's what goes on my helmet. Uh, I use that uh, specifically for that role. And then the Max 360, the 360 camera goes up on the handlebars and that becomes a, a super versatile camera where I can kind of frame up any shots that I want. Uh, and it works out perfect. I love it that way. Uh, and then the two fives that I have down here, they're basically just used as uh, a B-roll camera. So uh, when I did a suspension video on my truck recently, I had to mount a camera underneath the truck. I use those because if one of them falls and gets run over, which happened on my channel years ago with a Hero 4, well, it's not such a devastating thing to have one of your older cameras uh, that are kind of obsolete get smashed. The Hero 8 has no replaceable lens. So if you scratch or break this lens, this camera is as good as garbage. Versus the Hero 9, which you do have to pull it out of the media mod. You can see if you have any issues and you break this lens, you just buy a new lens and your camera is still good to go. That is a huge plus, especially for an action camera where it uh, might be getting beaten up a little bit. That is the biggest difference between the two cameras plus the front facing screen here. It is it is ridiculous. I, I mean, I, I'll show you guys in the garage. So let's go ahead and jump into the garage and we'll go through this setup uh, a little bit better and show you guys uh, the difference between uh, the audio and some video samples of what the GoPro Hero 9 is capable of in my working environment and show you guys how really uh, amazing the video and audio uh, are in this setup. First, let's do a quick unboxing of the media mod. This is something I haven't seen on YouTube yet, so I just thought it would be worth pulling it out of the box and showing you guys what it does come with. This is the media mod itself with the little foam windscreen, which is a nice addition. I probably won't use it all that often, but in reality, it is nice to have that in there. Now, this is why I went with the media mod. It does have these external ports for an HDMI, USB-C, and the 3.5 millimeter audio jack, which I think they should have put on the camera itself, but that is a different discussion. The clips here are actually really uh, stout. The new clips actually have a little spring load to them, which is really nice, so I don't foresee those uh, coming loose. It basically is the same clip on both the camera and the media mod. So you just pull off that door, slide it in. It's really that simple. That is the media mod assembly for the GoPro Hero 9. It is a really nice polished package. I think this thing is uh, really uh, well designed minus these little fingers on the bottom. They are very difficult to uh, get to if you don't have nails. And I did find that to be a bit cumbersome. Now for me, I always leave it on the hand grip once it's installed, so it's really not a big deal. But I did find using one of these thumb screws works out perfect to get that thing uh, poked out of there and then get it mounted. And like I said, once it's on here, it pretty much for me will stay there uh, all the time because the hand grip there is really, really versatile for uh, framing shots and it just stays there. And here you see the foam windscreen, which uh, pops on there and actually does have really nice positive retention. Uh, so I don't see that falling off, but I won't keep it on there uh, long term because the way that I set this camera up, you see that I run the Loom Cube light on the top, which this is the LC panel 112. I will link that in the description down below, as well as the Rode Wireless Go microphone that I run as well. And that stays on there pretty much all the time. And when I shoot, I use that microphone as much as I possibly can. This becomes my setup all the time. So let's go ahead and I will show you guys some audio samples and video samples now. So this is the Hero 9 right now with uh, just the regular camera, front facing, with a fan running in the background, and the air conditioner going at the same time. So I will go ahead and turn both these off so you guys can get an idea of the audio uh, as it is right now. Uh, this is obviously an echoey garage, so this is just the plain audio from the GoPro Hero 9. Uh, in the echoey garage with none of the air conditioners on and we will go ahead now and reconnect the uh, media mod 
and run with the directional mic on the media mod. And here we are with the media mod uh, connected back up again with the front facing mic uh, on the GoPro Hero 9 media mod. And we will turn the fan back on as well as the air conditioner. And I don't really know what the difference is in audio quality here. I'll find out in post. But this is again just an example in the Echoey Garage of what the GoPro Hero 9 media mod audio will sound like. So this is the Hero 9 right now with uh, just the regular camera front facing. And now what I will do is switch over to the Rode Wireless Go mic and see how that sounds. And here we are on the Rode Wireless Go. This microphone is my preferred go-to uh, when I'm doing stuff uh, in the car or anywhere that I'm trying to get better audio not running through the GoPro camera. I run this all the time. Again, don't know how this sounds, but it does tend to get the audio source closer to me and therefore eliminates some of the echo and things that you might hear on the video. So I will go ahead and kill the fan again and the air conditioner. And there you can see this is the sound of the Rode Wireless Go through the media mod on the GoPro Hero 9, just to give you guys a demonstration of how that sounds. Now I can tell you with this front viewfinder on this camera, it is awesome. It is absolutely ridiculous. Uh, the fact that you can basically just shake this camera around and it stays, I mean, really, really uh, horizon leveled. This is me shooting at uh, 2.7K, 60 uh, frames per second on Linear Plus. And as you can see here on the camera, I mean, I'm shaking this thing you know, back and forth quite a bit. And you know, the, the <laughs> The image on this is, is pretty incredible. The fact that you can see it on the viewfinder here makes life so much easier uh, for shooting, framing things up, knowing that if I wanna point to the compressor, I can see it there. Uh, same thing if I'm over here at the bike, knowing that I can uh, kind of rule of thirds my way uh, into these frames uh, on the fly is something that GoPro has never been able to do before. Uh, this camera is just ridiculous. It is by far, no questions asked, the best GoPro that has existed on the market ever. Uh, I would absolutely recommend it, but as I said earlier in the video, the GoPro Hero 7, which is recording me over here, is also no slouch. And if you are looking for a budget camera, you could not go wrong with the GoPro Hero 7, especially at 250 bucks, I believe is what, uh, what they're selling for now. So. With that being said, guys, thank you very much for tuning in. If this is your first time tuning in, please hit that subscribe button down below. Remember, likes go a long way to help support the channel. I cannot get over how ridiculously smooth this footage looks in the viewfinder. I can't wait to go and edit this video. I will catch you guys next time.